Hello students, this is Chef Sundar Srinivasan from AI SSMS College of Hotel Management and Catering Technology, Pune. Today is the third session on sandwiches. Earlier, we have gone through parts and composition of sandwiches, types of breads used in sandwich making, functions of spreads and fillings. In the second session, we went through uh, various types of sandwiches and we also saw various varieties of sandwiches. In this session, we are going to go through uh, storage and handling of breads, precautions to take uh, while preparing and storing of sandwiches, and we will also uh, go into some points of presentation or layout of sandwiches. So, storage and handling of bread. So you purchase only the amount of bread that uh, you're going to use for that particular day. Do not excess buy, uh, else you will have a problem of storage or uh, it will be a waste of your uh, money. So limit uh, your purchase. If you uh, purchase uh, excess bread by chance, if you have excess bread remaining, uh, try to use that uh, bread for grilled or toast sandwiches. Whereas you can use the fresh sandwiches, uh, sorry, the fresh bread for serving uh, sandwiches that are not grilled or toasted. So you store soft crusted bread in its original wrap, wrapper itself. So it protects against absorption or avoids moisture loss or a dampness in bread. So we basically protect the bread, keep it in its own uh, pack. Hard crusted breads, uh, they can be stored without wraps uh, in the area which has free air circulation. Uh, Although these breads have a shorter storage life, you must take care uh, that you use it as soon as possible. Do not uh, you know, refrigerate the bread too long. You can refrigerate it, but do not refrigerate it too long. Uh, if you keep it uh, for a long time, you know, it will uh, start to become stale and uh, dry or crumbly. Uh, you can freeze uh, the bread, uh, but don't keep it frozen for too long. So you store the bread best at a room temperature. Uh, at around 20 to 25 uh, degrees centigrade and keep it away from heat to avoid any spoilage. Go through some uh, precautions that you need to take care of. So use a bread which is at least 12 hours old. It cuts better and finer. We have uh, spoken about uh, this in the first session that how the bread is good at when it is around 12 hours. Very nice to cut. Neat cuts can be done. Two fresh bread. Uh, will not be easy to cut the crust will just you know tear off the bread should have a close fine texture so the texture should be fine it should be close knit gives a good appearance uh, and good flavor to that particular bread approximately sliced bread you know they should be neatly sliced they give a better appeal than the thicker ones and thicker ones take a lot of you know uh, time to uh, bite into and chew into so have nice even sliced bread pieces used. The crust should be removed neatly wherever applicable. So whichever uh, sandwiches where the crust has to be removed should have a neat clean cut done. Use a sharp knife. Yes, a very good and a sharp knife to be used so that the cut goes neat and clean. Uh, if you don't have a sharp knife, you know the bread will start to tear when you are cutting it. Use a palette knife to apply spreads. Some people also uh, like to use the butter knife to apply spreads. The palette knife go gives a good, nice, even uh, spread on the bread. Spreads such as butter or table margarine they need to be softened before using them. Yes, do not take it directly from the refrigerator and apply it on the bread. Either the butter or the margarine will form into small, small chunks and they might even tear the bread surface. So to avoid that, you soften it, uh, you can have you know, 10 seconds in the microwave or you soften it uh, with your palette knife and then you can use it for spreading. Fillings like cheese spread or cream cheese, they spread well at room temperature. Yes, again, you leave it at, at room temperature from the refrigerator, keep it out for some time, they'll become nice and soft and then you use it for spreading. Going ahead, uh, if the fillings are to be made beforehand, yes, if you have kept it in the refrigerator, again you remove it out, leave it out for some time and then you use it. So many a times what happens if you take it from the refrigerator and directly try to apply it on uh, the bread, uh, it will just you know not spread. It will not give you uh, that evenness that is required. It might even break the uh, bread slice. So leave it out for some time, 
and then you use it if you're purchasing bread then you know you buy it as close to the uh, preparation and service time okay also you buy if you're buying you know the bread just before preparation buy sliced bread directly do not buy a loaf and sit and slice it uh, you might get uneven slices uh, which is not good so you buy sliced bread it will be useful two slices of bread uh, in the same order as they are present i spoke about this earlier also in the first session so when you stack up or when you're going to use the bread for making sandwiches you lay them out as per their order that you have got in the loaf and then you use it in the same way so that you know when you're cutting the uh, crust away it is easy and they are you know in symmetry on each other ingredients used for filling or garnish should be as fresh as possible try to use the freshest possible ingredients uh, use only limited quantity when you are preparing you can always cut some fresh uh, vegetables rather than storing it for the next preparation or for the next day use enough filling in a sandwich yes this is very important to understand you have to use good amount of filling in that particular sandwich do not overdo it do not overdo it use approximate or appropriate into it and at the same time do not use too less else someone has to you know find out where is the filling no don't do that use good amount of filling but do not overdo it the ingredients must complement each other we have spoken about this earlier how the ingredients must complement each other maybe in their flavor and color also and taste also ensure that the filling you use it is not dry it should have enough moisture to give a good mouth feel yeah two dry ingredients will not give a very good mouth feel it will feel like you are just chewing into something very dry continuously ensure that it is moist it gives a very nice mouth feel uh, and taste when you are eating a sandwich prepare and cut sandwiches as close as possible to the service time yes try and you know prepare them just before service do not store them for a longer period of time they give the best taste when they are as close you know to the service time if you are going to cut it a little advance and keep uh, you need to cover it up so you can cover it up using a moist napkin uh, you know sterilized moist napkin or even a sterilized moist cheese cloth a double layer maybe you cover it up this is to prevent the bread edges from drying or curling up you can also use a plastic wrap for covering but generally what happens when you use plastic wrap you tend to apply a little pressure and this presses upon the sandwich so a loose plastic wrap would be Uh, avoid using the foil wrap this may you know lead to making the sandwiches uh, dry refrigeration yes you can refrigerate again i said that it can make the sandwiches a little dry uh, you can store it uh, wrapped again properly uh, in a refrigerator around 4 to 5 degrees centigrade up to 24 hours don't keep it for more than that you know uh, when serving sandwiches on a platter you place a doily okay generally a doily is placed and then you keep the sandwiches over it when you're plating it again they are very high they are very very perishable products and you must take care while handling such kind of thing as earlier point that don't store it for long since they are fresh they might even spoil very fast so take care uh, while storing your sandwich in the refrigerator now in presentation doing a good presentation is a very very good key factor we have spoken in the first uh, session of how using of garnishes will make a fantastic eye appeal to the customer so ensure that your sandwiches are cut nice and evenly you know do not do not have rough edges do not uh, cut criss cross give it a nice shape when you are cutting it appropriate plate or platter to be used as per the type or quantity of sandwich so if you are going to serve let's say one hamburger do not use a big platter use a simple plate a burger maybe some fries and a dip along with it it will look fantastic Many times, uh, a shredded cabbage or lettuce can be used uh, as a bed before you serve these sandwiches. Very commonly seen when you have uh, sandwiches that are served in buffet rather than individual. In buffets, you will find that shredded cabbage or lettuce is served on the platter. Line the platters with slices of cucumber, tomato. You have lettuce, many other things that can be uh, you know, served on the side. You know, it gives a good decoration, a good uh, look to the platter. Take care to serve some, you know, some dips along with sandwiches. Okay, many times people forget, but you always serve a dip. The most common, you know, you have tomato ketchup uh, sauce being served along with uh, sandwiches. 
Also, typically, relishes, fries, or chips they go well with uh, sandwiches. So many people do serve chips and fries. A good relish will also be nice. So before I say bye, uh, food trivia to you all. Find out when and where was the largest sandwich made. This is also mentioned in the Guinness Book of Records. You can also search over there. So thank you all, all students, for this particular session. Hope to see you all soon with a new topic. Students of AI SSMS College of Hotel Management and Catering Technology need uh, to click on the link given below in the description and attempt the quiz. Thank you all and happy learning.